My, I'm going to give my monologue tonight to President Donald J. Trump. He just recently recorded a video, and if you haven't seen this, I wanted you to see it, then we'll talk about it. I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack on the United States Capitol. Like all Americans, I am outraged by the violence, lawlessness, and mayhem. I immediately deployed the National Guard and federal law enforcement to secure the building and expel the intruders. America is and must always be a nation of law and order. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. We have just been through an intense election, and emotions are high. But now, tempers must be cooled and calm restored. We must get on with the business of America. My campaign vigorously pursued every legal avenue to contest the election results. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. In so doing, I was fighting to defend American democracy. I continue to strongly believe that we must reform our election laws to verify the identity and eligibility of all voters and to ensure faith and confidence in all future elections. Now Congress has certified the results. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. This moment calls for healing and reconciliation. 2020 has been a challenging time for our people. A menacing pandemic has upended the lives of our citizens, isolated millions in their homes, damaged our economy, and claimed countless lives. Defeating this pandemic and rebuilding the greatest economy on Earth will require all of us working together. It will require a renewed emphasis on the civic values of patriotism, faith, charity, community, and family. We must revitalize the sacred bonds of love and loyalty that bind us together as one national family. To the citizens of our country, serving as your president has been the honor of my lifetime. And to all of my wonderful supporters, I know you are disappointed, but I also want you to know that our incredible journey is only just beginning. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Well, I, I, the verse that's stirring in me is Isaiah 55, 11, and I was just really hoping I would get an opportunity to, to, to share this because we all know the verse. It says, the words that go forth out of my mouth won't return void. They'll, pros they'll accomplish what I please and prosper in the thing I send them to do. But uh, I want to read the last phrase from the message, which he says, they'll do the work I sent them to do. They'll complete the assignment I gave them. God's words have assignments on them. They have power in them. And his prophecies have assignments on them. And he says, you just have to persevere. If you do, they'll accomplish the assignment I gave them to do and assign and accomplish there is an incredible Hebrew word, asa. It's the word for creation, creating the earth, rivers, streams, stars. He said, my words have creative power in them. When we, when we come into agreement with what he says, and by the way, when he spoke that verse in Isaiah 55, 11, he wasn't talking about words that just sort of come out of the clouds. He was talking about words that the prophet was going to say. When we take his words and we speak them, he said, they have creative power on them. So say what I say. Guard your mind. Think my thoughts and say what I tell you to say. And that's why we can war with them, because they become a sword when we speak them. When we say what he says, God's words go forth and begin to do the assignment he told them to do. Yes, amen. I agree. Isaiah 55, 11. All right, Lance, I see you. I see you there. Go ahead. What you got? Well, I mean, it's just, it's just as Dutch is talking, I'm reminded of something that I've heard Brother Hagen and Brother Copeland say, which is, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. But in the book of Acts, when you're reading, 
how faith cometh, how this man was listening to Peter and he, he received faith to believe it's for healing. With uh, Paul, the same thing. And Paul seeing he had faith to be healed. They were hearing not the quoting of the Bible. They were actually hearing the inspired utterance of God's preachers. So faith comes into people supernaturally when they hear what we have to speak. And that's why it's so important that those of us that are commissioned to be uh, oracles that people listen to, that we aren't speaking our opinion, but we're really speaking what God is saying. And to give that living word out right now is, uh, is so important because at this moment in time, I really believe we're at this dividing line in history where you have Joshua and Caleb testifying to a land they can enter into and a promised land, and you have others that are in positions of influence that are saying something that is actually weighing people down. I just go by, like I've said all along, I go by what gives me strength in my spirit. If what I'm hearing is pulling me in the wrong direction, i got to back up and move towards what's building me up in the Holy Ghost. I'm setting up a tent in the center of a violent gang area. I am being literally assaulted from every direction. Unbelief in the church, threats from state government in California that has got the entire state locked down. You will not preach the gospel. You will not tell the people they can be healed by the power of Christ. So what did we do in defiance of the media? in defiance of the government, in defiance of the unjust judge, we went door to door to thousands of homes. Our tent goes up on Monday night. I'm going to walk in there and I'm going to say to the people, you will no longer be held by crack cocaine. You will no longer be in the grip of the despair and the lockdown of the state of California for the gospel of Christ has arrived and it will do it. Now, the people who are watching us, we're telling you, we're exhorting you to believe and stand. Let me tell you my conviction. My conviction is that regardless of everything that has been said tonight, every individual within the sound of my voice has a responsibility to push back and rebuke the devil and to say, you will not have my nation. You will not have my children. You will not have my sanity. You will not go after my health. And the fact of the matter is, that we have to also push back and say, no, we are not going to accept the agenda that China and all of you have decided for us, just like the unjust judge. You know, we are exactly like that widow. We've had justice deprived of us. And it is time, ladies and gentlemen, for us to get worked up about this. And I, for one, I'm telling you, these are not words for me. I am living on the edge of faith like I have never lived in my life. And I'm expecting the next several days to have a report of entire gangs being born again in California, of God starting a movement in the state of Azusa Street and in the beginning of so much of what we call Pentecostal. These wells are going to be reopened and the power of God is going to flow. I am like Dutch. I'm on fire right now. And I just feel that we I needed to say that. You know, sometime when I walk out, I'll look at a crowd that is filled with addicts, people who are paralyzed, blind, that have come expecting to be healed. And I can allow what my eyes see to dominate my thinking. And it's that moment that the discipline of what we've all been talking about tonight, that the word of God that is in us, the faith of Christ that is in us, the miracle working power of God, I've got to see them healed. I've got to see that those frowning faces are not going to dominate my thinking. Everyone that's watching now, there's a thread running through this program tonight. And I believe that God is speaking to you. He's telling you not to let your emotions be lost in the mix of this terrible moment. The devil is wanting to play with your mind. He's trying to give you vain imaginations. He's trying to fill you with fear and dread. He's trying to confuse you. And even in churches right now, from our pulpits, there's so much unbelief being preached. And this is this, the message of the Lord in this hour. I believe that God caused Brother Copeland to call us on the phone 
to drive this point home, this, this absolute essential moment that our mind is a battlefield and that we've got to say, and I do it every night, you, what I see is going to come under the domination of the word of God and the miracles are going to win out. And that's what we're going to see, folks. You know, we have to learn how to live with the impossible. Yeah, that's right. And to live in anticipation of the impossible. And that's where we're hanging our faith is in the power of God's word to restore this nation and to bring reformation and revival in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank Amen. you.